Hello and welcome to Breaking News here on CNN. We're bringing you live pictures out of Festus, Missouri, about 50 miles south of St. Louis, where a train filled with chlorine started leaking on the tracks outside a chemical plant where workers were offloading about 180,000 pounds of chlorine. Uh, several hundred people have been evacuated in a mobile home park area. About 50 people are complaining about breathing problems. Fortunately, according to authorities out there who tell us that the wind is light so that the chemical is not spreading very quickly, uh, chlorine, uh, breathing in chlorine fumes can cause serious illness, a burning of the lungs, even some brain damage, and in some cases, death. Um, this happened at about 9.30 local time there when workers were trying to uh, offload that chemical into a company called the DPC Enterprises and uh, when, the, when the hose ruptured. So uh, they have hazmat teams on the scene right now. They're trying to find the location of the leak so that they can fix it. Red suits there to go in, and what they're trying to do is identify the source of the leak in this train. It's a chlorine gas that's leaking out of this train. It was loaded with about 180,000 pounds of chlorine when it pulled up to this chemical plant. And right now on the telephone is Dr. John Palmer with the American Chemical Society. Did I get that right, Dr. Palmer? Yes, you did. All right. Can, if you can see this picture, um, can you Unfortunately, describe Unfortunately, I'm not in a position right, to see it. Let me describe it to you. I see at least two hazmat workers in orange suits on top of the car that contains the chemical. you still got chlorine gas leaking out from the bottom portion of it. Um, how would you describe they're going to try to attack this problem? Well, in general, they have to worry about uh, the public safety. So the first thing they've done, obviously, was evacuate the area, which is a wise move. And then they worry about their own safety. The suits are a help, but they also have to have a practical way to shut off the leak. Otherwise, the best thing is to stand back and just protect the public from getting too close to it. So I assume that what they're trying to do right now is decide if there's a hose or something, is there a shutoff valve still working that they can contain? The remainder of the material in you the know, tanker. And Dr. Palmer, it looks like they might be having some success because the cloud is beginning to thin out. Uh, the chemical is now, you can barely see a trace of the cloud coming out from underneath the car, so it looks like they were able to locate or at least seal up that hose connection. That is good news. Yes, they have methods, the hazmat workers have methods to either apply a patch or to, uh, again, if they've managed to find a valve to shut off the valve, then that would be the uh, normal procedure. Now still, though, you can see the chemical cloud. It appears to be laying low to the ground rather than dissipating up into the atmosphere. Um, you can still see evidence of that cloud on the ground. Uh, for, for what distance is this cloud still dangerous? Well, it can be for many hundreds of yards away, probably. Chlorine gas is about two and a half times heavier than air, and so it will lay low, low to the ground. And so as the wind slowly picks it up and dilutes it, that cloud will dissipate, or that, uh, that low-lying cloud will dissipate. Um, certainly chlorine in high concentration can even be deadly, obviously, um, but at lower concentrations, it's a problem down to about a part per million. So I'm sure they're out monitoring at distances away from this leak and making sure that it's safe for people to, uh, to be in the areas that they're, they're checking. About 50 people had to be checked out in hospitals um, because they were having breathing problems. How close were they likely to the chlorine leak? Well, if they were experiencing breathing problems, people that are very sensitive to, uh, to um, materials in their lungs might have had that at fairly low concentrations. They probably were still, uh, I'm guessing, several hundred yards away or even further away than that. And you have a little bit of an acid burn in your mouth and your throat when you breathe a gas like this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm guessing that's what they were experiencing was that bite in their throat. And as long as they got away from it and started breathing clean air and getting a little oxygen, they're probably going to be okay, but I'm sure they're under medical surveillance. So. Well, certainly since we took the picture, the live picture there, uh, these hazmat workers made quick work of their duty up top of that, that, uh, that car. They've now left the scene there and it appears that the cloud is completely uh, dissipated. Dr. John Palmer, American Chemical Society, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. All right, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, our very own medical correspondent up in New York. Um, Sanjay, we were just hearing that some 50 people are being treated for inhalation problems. Do you think these people are going to have any permanent damage? It appears I'm that sorry, we don't Carol. Have... Oh, there we go. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't hear the question. Oh, I just wanted to find out. Now that it appears that they've been able to seal the leak, 
Um, fortunately, we're just getting a view of the nearby mobile home park there. Um, I'm wondering, some 50 people had to be treated at the hospital for breathing problems. Do you think there's going to be any permanent damage? It's really unlikely, Carol. Uh, typically, the, the type of concentrations of chlorine, even though we saw that pretty scary looking uh, cloud of gas, the type of concentration that you need are pretty high uh, within the air. And the good thing is that uh, as soon as that, that chlorine actually gets outside the leak site, it actually dissipates or sort of gets uh, diluted pretty quickly. So besides some irritation to the, to the eyes, the nose, the mouth, things like that, it's unlikely that they have any permanent effects. The permanent effects that we're concerned about, of course, would be um, more, more permanent effects to the lungs. Actually, that same gas, that burning, actually causing scarring of the lungs, which would cause more permanent damage down in the long run, but uh, unlikely, uh, statistically, that that would happen. Well, that's good news indeed. All right, well, you watched it live. Those hazmat workers uh, were able to seal off that chemical leak. Chlorine is no longer flowing into that uh, mobile home neighborhood adjacent to that chemical plant, and all looks well uh, for now in Festus, Missouri. Breaking news there. Thank you very much, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, for joining us from New York. Now, still ahead, flying.